Back in early 2011, a group of rumen microbiologists got together and organized a small meeting in Palmerston North. And the aim of this meeting was to see how the, the rapid advances that were being made in DNA sequencing could benefit um, you know, the study of rumen microbes. And as a result of that meeting, um, three projects were identified. Uh, the Hungate 1000 was one of those projects and its specific aim was to attempt to generate a, a reference set of genome sequences of cultured rumen microorganisms. And uh, it's perhaps notable that the, the other two projects that were sprang out of that meeting um, have also been recent recipients of the Ag Research Science Prize. The Hunger 1000 found support from two sources. The New Zealand's Ministry of Primary Industries provided funding for the uh, coordination of the overall project and this was in support of the, uh, their role in the Global Research Alliance for Agricultural Greenhouse Gases. The sequencing component of the work and the downstream bioinformatics from that was supported by the US Department of Energy's Joint Genome Institute based in San Francisco and that came about as the result of a successful funding application to their global science program. And so the microbial cultures that we used in this work were um, from our own collection, but also made available to us from um, other rumen microbiologists worldwide. The project remains one of the, the largest targeted cultivation and genome sequencing programs um, that has been conducted to date. And you know, now that we have this awesome collection of, of genome sequences and the, the cultures that um, underpin them, um, it opens the possibility of doing a, a range of other interesting pieces of work to, to see how, you know, what these organisms are doing and how they interact with their animal host. The title of the project, the Hungate 1000, uh, is a tribute to Robert Hungate, who was the pioneer of the techniques for the cultivation of anaerobic microbes. And in addition to that, he also uh, trained and worked with many of the scientists who were the, the first rumen microbiologists to work in New Zealand back in the 1960s. So the Hungate 1000 project was a huge undertaking by rumen microbiologists, both here in New Zealand and worldwide. Working with uh, strict anaerobic gut microbes is no mean feat. And the results of the, the project are a real credit to the team that were in, involved. When it came down to writing the paper, there were so many different aspects or angles that we could have taken that the real challenge for us was really trying to decide on what was the story that we wanted to tell from the Hungate 1000 project. Eventually, we decided to structure the paper into three main parts. The first part was really around what, what do we do? So we generated you know, a really useful microbial resource of both cultures and genome sequences that were representative of the cultures that existed at the time. We took cultures from 15 different livestock species and from 21 different um, countries. And this was a huge advancement on the information that we had previously. For example, in 2011, we, there was only 15 rumen microbe genome sequences available to us. And the Hungate 1000 contributed a further 410, which is a massive um, achievement. For part two of the paper, we really wanted to take the reader through um, you know, how you could use this information to help try and understand some of the microbial processes that are ongoing in the ruminant animal. In ruminant animals, microbes play a really important role. They help break down the plant material into smaller compounds that the animal can use for its energy and growth. We used a variety of different analyses in conjunction with the JGI to help provide new insight into how those microbial processes occur in the rumen. For part three of the paper, we decided to focus um, our analysis in, in terms of comparing rumen microbes versus the microbes that are present in the gastrointestinal tract of the human. Uh, the rumen has always been a great example of a complex anaerobic microbial community environment. And a lot of the lessons that we learn in rumen microbiology are often transferable or applicable in the human microbiome area and vice versa. And so with that, we, we had our paper and we approached Nature Biotechnology. We were obviously super excited when it was eventually published in such a well-respected um, journal. My name is Rika Sishadri. I'm a computational biologist 
at the uh, JGI or Joint Genome Institute. Uh, JGI is a U.S. Department of Energy funded user facility that provides access to advanced genomics capabilities to the worldwide scientific user community. Uh, so my particular role on the Hungate 1000 project was to uh, do a lot of the comparative genomics and computational analyses. And so I worked really closely with the team at Ag Research. Uh, it was a really rewarding experience because, you know, Bill and Sinead were always really enthusiastic to see the latest results and to discuss them. And, um, you know, they brought a lot of insights uh, because of their domain expertise uh, in rumen physiology. And that really resulted in a high quality publication with new insights and hypotheses to, to follow up on. So uh, it was a big win for all of us. The publication of the uh, Hungate Collection uh, paper in Nature Biotechnology was a, a landmark for rumen microbiology and it's perhaps the, the largest impact that uh, New Zealand rumen microbiologists have had uh, in a global context. And that um, publication is just a reflection of the actual establishment of a, a really great resource. So we've got rumen microbial genomes and their corresponding cultures. Now what that allows us to do is to do pure culture studies where we examine the, uh, the effects of different growth conditions on organisms and then relate that to the genome sequences. But also, uh, more importantly, mixed cultures of either defined uh, consortia of rumen microbes together to look at the interactions which happen between microbes and then to use the genome sequences of each of those organisms to figure out which genes are being uh, turned on and, and, and turned off and regulated. So those genome and culture enabled experiments are really fundamental to beginning to understand the real function, the gene functions within the room and understanding how it works at a gene uh, level. So the, the other impact from the project has been the interest generated internationally with a, a whole bunch of uh, groups. So both rumen microbiology and, and human gut microbiologists around the world. And we've been uh, inundated with uh, large numbers of requests for the cultures for other people to use in their projects. So uh, we were lucky enough to get a um, Global Research Alliance uh, project funded by, kindly funded by the Ministry for Primary Industries, uh, which has allowed us to maintain those cultures and supply them internationally. So Kerry Riley, who was, who was overseeing and, and doing that work, um, has sent more than 200 cultures to over 21 countries around the world. So that's been a, a major impact and, and, and a, a, a great um, boost to our profile uh, internationally.